security lapses and challenges certainly do manifest on a daily basis in schools in Nigeria. The launching of attacks by abduction of students for monetary ransoms has taken prominence and has remained an issue of serious security concern to government and Nigerians. In the prevailing circumstances, the safety and security of school administrators, teachers, students and communities where the schools are located are no longer guaranteed. While government at all levels are working round the clock towards finding lasting solutions to these challenges, what role can parents and school administrators play in complementing government efforts in addressing the situation? This is our focus on Panorama this week, coming to you live from the Lagos Network Center of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Hinginu John Adams. Thanks for being there. It is generally agreed that a turnaround has been witnessed in the aviation industry in the last six years in Nigeria, which led to the country in faraway Montreal, Canada, recognized among the 16 countries presented with the recognition in solving aviation security and oversight deficiencies by ICAO out of 139 member countries. Even though the pandemic occasioned by COVID-19 rages on, there are success stories in the skies. Aviation correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro tells us more. Safety skies of Nigeria, always welcoming and friendly to new and existing aircraft and airlines. The success story in Nigeria's aviation industry started a few years ago when he promised to complete all ongoing infrastructure provision and projects in the sector was made by President Muhammadu Buhari on absorption of office in May 2015. Last year, the Akano Ibium International Airport Enugu, which was abandoned and later closed for repairs, was completed, launched, and restarted to join the list of other international airports just like the Port Harcourt International Airport, Nili Beach Terminal Building, and the Namdi Azikwe International Airport Abuja New Terminal, completed between 2018 and 2019. I think this particular government will have done a lot. And I, I hear that even at the international airport in Lagos, there's also a massive change. The fact that safety is first in aviation, the instrument landing systems capable of landing aircraft at zero visibility during a severe weather, including Category 3, have been installed in Lagos and Abuja while other airports got upgraded to Cat 2. The twin most important after infrastructure provision is safety and security. The sustenance of these in the face of COVID-19 pandemic has endeared Nigeria to the International Civil Aviation Organization, ACAO, in 2019. Its 40th Trainer Assembly in Montreal, Canada, presented the Certificate of Effective Implementation of ACAO Standards and Recommended Practices, which was received by the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika. Similarly, the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, Zaria, has been provided with Boeing 737 full simulator and six diamond trainer aircraft to enhance local capacity and reduce capital flights. This, apart from the procurement of a calibration aircraft to enhance safety and improve efficiency of air navigation, also installed was a multi purpose aircraft fire training simulator for the college. We will no longer go outside the country to train. We will train here in Zaria and other people will come and train in us. And our own is fully automated. Why airlines across the globe are shutting down due to COVID-19 impact, a total of five airlines are joining the industry, while 23 others have applied to the NCAA to begin operations. The existing airlines have also been acquiring 
brand new airplanes. Businessmen with money are welcome to come in and float an airline, and that's why you're seeing these different airlines coming up. These success stories are being capped with the news of Nigeria's dream of floating a national air carrier. It's about to become a reality in 2022, as disclosed by the Minister of Aviation, Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. In infrastructure now, prelude to the inauguration of the 156 kilometers Lagos Ibadan rail line, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, is inspecting the project to ensure that finishing touches are done where necessary. The Minister in company of the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, obviously satisfied, believes that the federal government is set to unlock the most significant gateway for trade and economic prosperity in Africa. Diana Ajali reports. Despite awaiting commissioning, the double track standard gauge rail line commenced passenger service in December last year. With the hope of increasing mobility options, preserve Nigeria roads from the impacts of trucks, while at the same time, facilitate cargo evacuation directly from the Apapa ports. The timely delivery of the project is important to the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, especially as the date of inauguration draws nearer. We made some advancement, financial advancement from our budget. When we get the loan, they will continue for to, to Abuja. Because if you don't finish from Lagos to Kano, it makes no economic sense. We have gathered experience on Abuja, Kaduna, we have gathered experience on Ita, do worry. That experience, something will be done to be used on uh, Ibadan Lagos. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, on his part, expressed satisfaction on these positive achievements of the federal government. With this uh, rail railroad completed, you're cutting down the travel time between uh, Lagos and Ibadan by hours. But more importantly, we are creating jobs along the line. The transportation minister also said plans are ongoing to begin work as soon as possible. In Lagos, Diana Ajali, NTA News. Now, Governor Bello Mohammed of Sanfara State has approved the immediate suspension of the Emir of Sado in Maru local government area of the state, Al Haji Husseini Umar. The governor further approved the district head of Nsado, Al Haji Nasiru Muhammad Serkin Kudu, will oversee the affairs of the Emirate. Similarly, the district head of Nasara Mailai in Burning Magaji local government area of the state, Al Haji Bello Wakalla, has been suspended from office. His suspension is also with immediate effect. The governor consequently approves the constitution of a high-powered committee under the leadership of retired DIG Mamman Ibrahim Safi to investigate the activities of the two suspended traditional rulers. He asks that security agencies should be effectively implemented and it should be effectively should effectively implement the presidential order to shoot any bandit person or group seen unlawfully carrying guns across the state. The governor has similarly dissolved the state executive council with immediate effect. The secretary to the state government, the chief of staff, and the deputy chief of staff to the governor are also relieved of their respective appointments. Chairman and members of the state commissions and boards of various agencies are also dissolved. In a statement signed by the special advisor to the governor on public enlightenment, media and communication, Zailani Buffa, the dissolution does not affect commissions provided for by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, a passionate appeal has been made to federal government to put modalities in place that will ensure safe return of the 136 students and teachers of Stanku Sali Islamia School abducted on Saturday in Teginara, Finn local government area of Niger State. Parents and guardians of the abductees met their appeal while narrating their ordeal to NTA News correspondent Mukhtar Abubakar who visited the area.
Salu Tanko Islamic School Tegna, established in 2005, runs both formal and informal system of education until tragedy struck on Sunday, the 30th of May, when some group of bandits invaded and abducted some of the pupils and students of the school alongside their teachers during Islamic lessons. We are in office. Then the armed bandits come. First of all, before they came in, they start, one of them come searching the gate. The gate didn't open. Some of them climbed the gate and get into the school. What I saw was very horrifying because right in front of my eyes, my children were, were just chatted out. All of them were, were female. The, the last one is just about five years old. Is that a number of students registered to the school? Uh, about 303 that are registered with the school. Um, but from the instance of yesterday uh, to today, we have a confirmed figure as, as provided by the parents. We have 136 as reported by the parents at the children that are abducted by the bandits. Some of the parents of the abducted puppies and students of the school are, however, appealing to the authorities' concern to rescue their children and bring them back unharmed. There's two. Uh, girls or, um, Men and female. How old are they? Um, 16 years old, the, the female one, Mariam, and uh, 7 years old. Salu. I cry off to an extent that I cannot. The authority has, has done well to that. We want them to do more. The incident has paralyzed economic activities in the area, while vehicular movement has been reduced drastically along Mina Tegina Road as at the time of filing this report. From Tegina, a Rafi local government area of Niger State, Mukhtar Abubakaru, NTA News. The Global Day of Parents is celebrated annually to stimulate awareness on the importance of parenthood and its role in providing protection and tools needed for positive development in children. Annie Daniels takes a look at how some parents and their children are bonding in Lagos and the result on the society at large. A society without children, they say, is one without a future. And a society without well-brought-up children arguably will translate to a lawless and chaotic one. This underscores the importance of not just parenting, but good parenting in every sphere of life. We are close a lot, so we talk a lot. Things. So if there's something disturbed, especially the girl or the boy. So I don't see, like, like if there's nothing, something is wrong, like if they are having problems in school, I'll be the first person that they will tell before I will tell to their father. And the way we teach them to go to school, they have good education, they will be useful to us in future. In my own religion now, at least 6 a.m., you have to be waking your child, telling them, go and pray, go to mosque. Right. By the time a child is like 7 years old, the knowledge will be in he or she. My respondents all agree that parents are the drivers and shapers of a child's life before launching out into the bigger society. So, trauma and emotional wounds should not be inflicted on a child, else his physical, spiritual, psychological and mental growths will be hindered. Play with them, joke with them, so you can get what is spending them in their, in your, in their mind, so you can do it as in, you can work on where they are Week. This respondent, a stepmother to three children, do not see herself as such because she's aware parents are a beacon of a child's life. They lay the foundation for children, nurture and equip them with necessary tools and make selfless sacrifices to ensure their growth. They will remember me that even though she's not my mom, she gives me a wonderful something that I can remember, always remember. It's not like I want to take their mother's space, so, but still they too see me as their mother. Like let's say, the way they're supposed to grow up with their mom, they couldn't grow up like that, and I was there to help them. So they'll still see me as their mother, and I'm seeing them as my children. And for the children, they can confidently confide in their stepmother because she has never failed in her duty as their best friend, sister, and mother. And 
and she used to take care of us. Hi. If we ask her for anything, she will give us. She helps me with my books, assignments, and anything I need about school. She helps me with it. She somebody a bit more about my dad, but if I told her, she asked me that who is the person that will take her to the person. When I take her, she was who is the person that I fought inside the two of us. If, if I'm doing one, then she will go and correct me inside. But if it's the person, she will correct the person outside. Whether biological parents or not, the general consensus is that parents should have a good relationship with their children to avoid creating barriers that may be a threat to a peaceful society. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Still in the spirit of Global Parents Day to discuss on the role of parents in tackling security challenges in schools is uh, Busola Olanubi, an educationist. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good day, Nigeria. All right. Um, as a parent, seeing what is happening in some schools across the country presently, what is going through your mind? Oh, for me, it's how did we even get here? I believe that no parent should or student should have to make a choice between the right to life and the right to education. And now it's becoming apparent that these um, kidnappers, they are becoming more adventurous and they, are, they want to get to all parts of Nigeria. So um, it's not fair, but it's about disappointment, about how far we have sunk as a nation. So now, um Still talking about that, what yeah. do you think is responsible for this? Okay, I think the main thing that is responsible for this is the breakdown of the family structure. So, because uh, poverty, joblessness is not an excuse to engage in illegal activities. But because pe parents don't have time for their children anymore, so those values that we were known for as Africans, as Nigerians, we are gradually losing them. And that is why people can sit down and uh, conspire to cause uh, pain to others, all in the name, uh, all in a quest for making feel the local. So for me, it's the breakdown of the family structure that is mainly responsible for this. So indirectly, you're saying um, charity begins at home. So how can parents now step in to curb this? Okay, so uh, the role of parents in the lives of children cannot be overemphasized. Parents should make it their duty to train their children. The Bible says, train of a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So as our own individual family units, we need to engage our children. We need to teach them values. It's not everything that the school can teach. We need to have times that we need to pose questions to them, know what they are thinking about, and in our own way, let them know that it is not good to engage in vices like this. Okay, um, do you think that uh, the community also has a role to play? Because I know that uh, when we were growing up, a neighbor sees the child engaged yes, in something wrong as, and as he, he, for Yes, the but yeah. I think these days is not like that. Do you think community should rise up and do something about it? Uh, of course. Uh, uh, the, our father says... says need to get back to that. So we need to be involved in what happens around us. The whole community must collaborate to stem these vices. These kidnappers, they, are, they do not come from uh, the sky. They live amongst us. So in before, where you see somebody uh, displaying affluence that they cannot account for, you would report. So I think we still need to get to that uh, stage where we, we ask questions. So um, before I let you go, um, okay. as an educationist, what, what measures should schools adopt to okay. curb this kidnapping? Okay, so on the part of schools, this is the time to collaborate with parents, 
This is the time to collaborate with security agencies in their communities. So I would advise educators that they, they should have the contacts of the nearest uh, police uh, station. They should know the people in the community. And then there's something that they do in banking. They call it Know Your Customer, KYC. This is the time to also know your staff. Know your staff because we hire without even doing any kind of background checks on these people. So we also need to know our staff. Each staff, we must know where they stay. We must, there must be people that we can hold accountable if we don't find them. Because for kidnappers to strike, there must be an insider or somebody that is very familiar with the environment. So this is the time to, to collaborate. This is the time to put in measures. I might not be able to discuss all our measures here, but this is the time to discuss measures uh, to to have measures put in place to prevent uh, kidnappings in our own school. So the safety and security of our children is paramount and we must tackle it in some. Thank you very much, Usola Olanubi, for sharing your thoughts with thank, us. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. You're still watching Panorama on the network service of the NTA. We take a short break now. Panorama continues shortly. Thanks for staying. Eligible Nigerians who initially received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine have been asked to present themselves at various vaccination centers nationwide for the second dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Chairman Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa stated this when the committee members received their second jabs in Abuja. Mitaire Ipen reports. Thank you very much, Chairman. Twelve weeks after their first jabs, the Chairman and members of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 as well as some journalists received the second dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Experts believe the booster dose is necessary to enhance immunity against the virus. The PSC chairman reiterates the safety of the vaccines, emphasizing that receiving it in full glare of the media is part of the advocacy against vaccine hesitancy. Nigeria cannot afford a third wave, and thus will do everything to protect our territory. In the next couple of weeks, the Presidential Steering Committee will focus on three major things. Increase testing, especially in states. Increase oxygen reserve capacity in case there is a third wave. And increase vaccine acquisition drive. As Nigeria intensifies the vaccination drive to inoculate 2 million citizens, shortage of vaccines globally is a major challenge the PSC will have to overcome. The goal is to vaccinate 70% of Nigerians by 2022 to achieve herd immunity. In Abuja, Mitairi Igben, NTA News. Talking COVID-19, latest figures from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control as at the 31st of May shows that 203 new cases of the coronavirus have been recorded in six states of the Federation, including the FCT, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 166,518 in Nigeria. Out of the new infections, Benue State topped the list with 178 new cases, followed by Lagos with 10 cases, Ondo 6. FCT and Kaduna had four cases each, while Plateau recorded one case. 158,781 persons have been discharged, and sadly, 2,099 deaths have been recorded across the country. That's it on Panorama from the Lagos Network Center. Thanks for watching.